Hey, I'm Brian. And I'm Crystal. And we are Von Hala Adventures. Today, we're going to be talking about some van life tips everybody needs to know about if you're going to be living on the road in the U.S. And that is specifically parking. This is a big one. Oh yeah. So we're gonna go through our list of our favorite places to park. Some are paid, some are free. And so let's start with our first one, which is campgrounds and RV parks. So campgrounds and RV parks are all over the country. Uh, the prices range from $8 with no hookups, no electric, no sewer, anything like that, to like as high as $68. Some plus sides to staying at a campground or RV park. They're generally everywhere, so pretty much anywhere in the US. Another plus side is if you are really operating like all your electric, to have hookups uh, can be really helpful in those times. And that's if you have hookups, of course, like on your van where you can hook up outside. Another plus side to campgrounds and RV parks is the amenities. Generally, if you get a campground, they're gonna have hot showers, which we already have a shower in our van, but a lot of people don't. We're very privileged in that way. Also, why Wi-Fi is a good thing to have when you're at those mm -hmm. RV parks and campgrounds, but sometimes the Wi-Fi is, well, most most it's of the time, the Wi-Fi is not that good. Uh, the downside, I would say, to campgrounds and RV parks are generally, one, cost, um, especially if you haven't put that into your budget. Like we yeah. said, like anywhere from like $8, which is like no hookups, it's usually like a tent site, but up to like 68, 70 bucks. So yeah, that can be really helpful, definitely very reliable, but it is not our top choice by any means. Yeah, last resort. Yeah. Our second choice for where we like to park overnight and actually our favorite uh, places that we like to stay is BLM land. So BLM land is public use land and you're generally pretty out in the middle of nowhere though there is some BLM land that is fairly close to cities and sometimes even right off the highway where you drive for a little bit but you're pretty much out in the middle of nowhere which is definitely a plus to this is that you're not around a lot of people Two, it's free, which is also awesome. And I think this is where a lot of people are taking those Instagram worthy photos because you get some pretty epic spots in the middle of the mountains near the water. Um, yeah, we've stayed in some really cool places that are BLM land. And this is definitely our preferred way to travel. But there are some downsides to uh, BLM land. Usually you're not around cell phone service and sometimes you need four wheel drive to get to where you're going. Yeah. And we don't have four-wheel drive. We have two-wheel drive on our ProMaster. Yeah. The roads can be rough sometimes. Yeah, the roads can be rough and then coupled with the cell phone service, so you really have to be prepared. You want to make sure that you're stocked up on everything. So BLM line is really top choice. Top choice. For sure. We're going to leave a link down below so you can check out some BLM land wherever you are traveling to next so you can scout out places ahead of time. We're also going to share some more resources at the end of this video on how to find really awesome spots. Okay, so number three is corporate parking like places like Walmart, Cabela's, Cracker Barrel, those three in particular. You can park there overnight most of the time. Um, back in the day, Walmart, all Walmarts allowed you to park there overnight. Everybody knows that. But there are Walmarts that do not allow that anymore. So when you roll up to a Walmart or call in advance, make sure that they allow parking overnight. And same thing with Cabela's and Cracker Barrel. But yeah. pluses are if you don't have a toilet or even a sink in your van or your RV, whatever it is that you're traveling in, then you know you can go in and use it there. So some places are 24 hours. Um, they're definitely good to have on the list, but you definitely need to check ahead of time. Yeah. So number four is stealth camping in residential areas. Biggest thing you need to do in stealth camping is obviously cover your windows, black them out so the light doesn't come through the inside. That's the whole purpose of stealth camping is to um, make it look like no one's in the car. Also, don't stay in the same place twice in a row. After the first night goes by, move somewhere else. If you're gonna stay in the neighborhood, whatever, just move your car. Don't, yeah. otherwise people start noticing, especially if you're in like nicer neighborhoods. If we're gonna do that, we're generally driving around and like scoping out neighborhoods. And you also have to think about, is your van or your RV going to be level? Sometimes the 
the street is like crooked, you know, like yeah. angles, so like your van is crooked. You can use leveling blocks, but if you're doing that, you're basically saying, hey, we're posted up here. Yeah. So we don't even use leveling blocks when we're stealth camping. So we always try to find like the most flat street possible to park on. Uh, and for the most part, it's worked. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's something to think about, but it's definitely an option. Yeah, definitely check your city ordinances to see about the parking situations. Yeah. So number five is vistas, viewpoints, pullouts. There's definitely been times where we've been driving down the road and mm. we thought we we're gonna go a lot longer than we were, but we're behind in time because we wanted to stop and take pictures and all that sort of stuff. And so we've had to just pull over on, you know, some viewpoint or a lookout area. And there's some things you definitely need to think about if you're doing this. So the first one is if look for no camping signs or no overnight parking. Yeah. Like obviously if it says that don't stay there, but if there's no signs and um, you know, you see other people there, that's a pretty good sign you can stay overnight. We've definitely found that in, in California and Oregon where we've seen other people staying there so we're like oh that's a pretty good sign we're probably okay here there is a loophole to uh, the rest stop uh, pull out vista thing um, usually when you're at a rest stop you have eight hours to, to be there to like rest it's a rest stop you're resting um, so you can stay there for eight hours just like these viewpoints and vistas and turnouts and pullouts whatever um, you can legally stay there for eight hours so some, if, some. some of them. if you roll up at two in the morning get out of there at 10 in the morning you know uh, just kind of abide by the rules, the eight-hour rule. Um, if you're not sure if you can stay there overnight, stay the eight hours and then go to the next place. Yeah, definitely though I would check like ahead of time if you can um, to see if that's true for your particular viewpoint. That's why it's best to kind of look ahead to see where you're going to be on your route because uh, that eight hours will not always apply. For number six, we have rest stops. Uh, rest stops have their obvious um, pros and cons. Um, pros is it you have a restroom you have a bathroom to use and you can stay there for a little bit and rest take a little nap whatever uh, downside would be it's kind of loud because you're on the yeah, highway super noisy people walking around talking even cars trucks driving by so yeah it's not the best place to be but in a pinch you know you can take a rest there and you'd be all right they work yeah. okay for number seven we have truck stops not ideal, but they do work. Yeah. Uh, we tend to stay at, when we have to, at like Pilot, Flying J, or Love's truck stop. I always forget about those truck stops, but they're all kind of handy because yeah. there's Wi-Fi there and you can fill up water. So also too, I would say that there's often hot showers because that's where truckers are going to kind of take care of themselves sometimes too. So you can get hot showers, which is another plus. Um, sometimes they're free, sometimes not. I mean, it's still an option though, for sure. So look yeah. at on your route. If you're like, I don't see anywhere where I could possibly stay and you're going for a long freeway drive, truck stops are gonna work. Um, downside, this to me is the biggest, is they are so loud yeah. if you're staying next to the trucks because their generators are running all night long. So if you're somebody that's more sensitive to sound and uh, vibrations and energy like me they are pretty loud um, that's the biggest downside so they work in a pinch but they're not ideal yeah so we want to leave you all with some tips first tip is actually to use apps there's a few different apps that we use the main one that we use is free which is awesome and it's called i overlander there's a link below um, to check it out in the description area very handy app super handy yeah. so i overlander is awesome because it'll show dispersed camping which is boondocking or blm land it'll show paid campgrounds rv parks where you can fill up for water um gas stations there's so much different things that you can filter yeah where you can shower yeah where you get electric Mm -hmm. um, where you can do your laundry. Yeah, different van lifers and other people that are traveling around will drop a pin basically for their coordinates and write the description of places. Sometimes there's even photos and it will say what um, the amenities are to that area as well. So people that have already said, oh, hey, don't go here or hey, go here instead. So you can also use the filters uh, to find great places along your route. So grateful for that app. And then yeah. the other apps that we use is the van life app 
app, which is often very similar to iOverlander. Honestly, they have usually the same spots. We have noticed that iOverlander gives way more descriptions because more people use it. But the Van Life app is also something to take a look at. You can take a peek in the um, in the descriptions uh, section below for a link to that. And then there's one that uh, you just started using. Yeah, it's called it's called the Dirt. It's a camping app. It uh, shows you free camping, paid camping, dispersed camping for RVs, tents, and you know all, all sorts of uh, campsites. And that's another one that's pretty handy too. Yeah. It's not as descriptive as like iOverlander, but at least it tells you like where the where you can camp in the area. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty handy. We like to scope out where we're gonna stay that night and have an idea of a few different places, so. Tip number two, unless you don't know if you can stay there, the rule is stay one night and then get out. <laughs> yeah. Don't make it look like you're living there either. Yeah. And unless you know you can stay there. Like obviously an RV park or campground will be different, but. Yeah. That that can ruin it for everybody. So. Yeah, that's not a good idea. Something big though. <laughs> yeah. Our number three tip is something we already kind of touched on, and that is planning your entire trip. Have some options. Have some options that are in the middle at a couple different points, or even closer to where you think you want to stop, and maybe even farther out too, and yeah. download the area of Google Maps. Yeah, I like to download different regions in Google Maps, so a lot of times there's not a phone signal where you're going, so if you need to use the Google Maps, it's good to have that pre-downloaded yeah. in whatever region you're in. It's super helpful. Yeah, it's really helpful. And then you can use something like the iOverlander app and um, it has a link to Google Maps, so it will open there. I would put that as like a 100% tip of be sure to do. Have your apps, have your Google Map areas, and have a few backup places that you're gonna go to because um, other people have scoped them out. So that's really super helpful. So those are our tips. Those are our favorite spots for parking in a vehicle overnight when you're traveling in a camper van or an RV, something like that. We trust that these tips will help you all as you begin your journeys or continue your journeys, whatever that is. Uh, yeah. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, be sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel if you want more tips on van life and to also follow us along on our adventures. We make at least one video a week right now. We're gonna aim for two. Yeah. And we'll catch you all next week. Happy parking. <laughs>